Namaste, my name is Annie and today I'm really excited to lead you through a yin yoga class and this yin yoga class is how to abandon our fears through the poses and meditation. So in the world today there's a lot of uncertainties happening and I really hope this class will really help you to calm your nervous system and perhaps offer you some clarity in wherever you are right now. So let's begin. Let's start by coming onto your seat and then place the soles of your feet together. You can draw the heels closer to the growing or have it slightly away. Ideally is to find the sensation in the inner growing and then the lower back. And gently walk your way down towards the ground and allow the spine to round. You can also place a block under the forehead for support. So if this is your first time practicing yin, there are two reasons to move in yin. The first reason is if the body invites you to go deeper, then you listen to that intuition guiding you into this new space in the body. Or if you feel like you might experience some injuries, then you give yourself permission right away to either come out of the pose a little bit um, away from the edge or completely out of it and rest in Shavasana. And gently breathe through the nose and bring your awareness between the eyebrows. Chinese medicine, the back is where the urinary bladder meridian runs. And in this channel, when it's in balance, we feel a lot of fear as well as paranoia and confusion. So this yin class really helps you to flush out any blockages in our energy channels and help you find your balance and harmony. If the body invites you to go deeper, you can slowly adjust the posture and sink just a little bit lower. But always honor your physical body and never push beyond your limits. Now slowly coming up and then go out as slowly as you go into the pose. Draw the knees together with your hands and extend your legs out in front. Let's come into your first resting position. In yin, we do a lot of rest in between poses to rehydrate our tissue. So you can lie down or you can come into child's pose. Find the position where you feel most relaxed.
Now gently roll to one side and then use your hands to help push yourself back up. Excellent. So the next pose is half dragonfly. So I will face you here and it's similar to the previous posture but instead of having both feet in like a diamond shape, extend now your right leg out to the side using the length of your mat for the comfort so your heels are supported. And now your right heel, your left heel can be closer to the groin or slightly away. And the target area will be inside the inner leg. Now again, slowly walk your way forward and allow the spine to round, you know, very different from other styles of yoga. And you either can put a bolster in the front body or again use a block and then place the block under the forehead. And I'll show you my other favorite pose or support here is just come onto my elbows. And if you have your hands on the elbows, I would offer you this acupressure points where you find the beginning of your eyebrows, urinary bladder too, the meridian we just spoke about that stores a lot of fear and then paranoia when it's imbalanced. So this acupressure, I use my thumbs and then gently nestle it into the depression at the beginning of my eyebrows and it's just using soft pressure no need to press too hard and then rest your mind Releasing your hands, but keep the body where it is. And if the body invites you now to go deeper, feel free to do so. often we run away from fear thinking that's something bad in life but fear is actually the birthplace of opportunity to face our vulnerability and being vulnerable is to show courage confidence accountability so embrace this feeling but then channel it into a higher vibration Instead of calling it fear, call me vulnerability and understand you are brave and you are courageous. beautiful slowly coming out gracefully and then we're not going to take a big rest in between but we are going to do something called dynamic transitions so we're just going to windshield wipe you keep facing the length of the mat but just windshield wiping so giving your inner growing a little bit of relief so if that was very intense for you just breathe it out Inhale, white light. Exhale, white light. Good. And let's go to the other side right away. So again, starting with a diamond shape, extending now this time your left leg out. 
and then draw your right heel closer to the growing. So obviously, if you have a much larger range of flexibility, then just have your leg out to the side slightly more. So right away, you know what to do, slowly rounding the spine. And with this foot, just keep it relaxed. It can roll in, roll out. It's really up to your skeletal and structural um, composition. So let's coming down. The body invites you to deepen, listen to it. And sometimes it's not about letting go of the physical body, it's about letting go of our emotional and mental body. Are you obsessively holding on to thoughts that are not serving you? And see if you can invite new thoughts, refreshing positive thoughts in. And slowly let's walk out and this time we'll do the same dynamic transition but we'll follow it with a nice well-deserved rest so go ahead and do a few windshield wiping movements finding fluidity in your connective tissue and connective tissue is what we call fascia and oftentimes fascia has a lot of nerve endings is connected to our nervous system so by giving a lot of fluids, we actually helps hydrate the nervous system, calming ourselves. Let's come to a rest.
deepening your breath now and let's come out of it and it's really up to you how you want to come out but I'm just offering you to roll to the side this will keep it nice and smooth now let's come into a position where we're gonna do the little bit of heart opening so sitting in almost like a hero pose now if this is challenging for you to sit between your heels you can also sit on the block yeah, that will give you some of the pressure off your knees so walking your fingertips back and I like to have my wrist turning away so my fingertips are facing away from my feet you can come onto your palms and then already reach your heart up and out externally rotate your arms and then charge into your legs and we're just going to be holding this for about 30 seconds now you can look up if your neck feels fine or keep your head forward and of course you can look back choose the version that works for you but this one needs a bit more energy in the legs we're just holding for 10 more seconds And slowly sitting your hips down and then gently walking back. Excellent. Let's keep walking and then coming onto your hands and knees. Let's tuck the back toes and then slightly grip the fingertips. Imagine there's a little bit of space under. You know, let's not imagine, let's do it. So you grip into the floor and then tuck your toes. Now the grip isn't like a 100% grip, you know, it's more like a 2 out of 10 and slowly drop your chest towards the floor, looking up, and then push into the ground, rounding the upper back. Continue to do several rounds in your own rhythm. Now I'm gonna add a second layer here, and this is when you tilt the tailbone up, so like an anterior pelvic tilt, you're gonna sit towards the heels, and then you're gonna roll up the spine into posterior pelvic tilt and look towards your belly button and then continue the small waves shift your hips towards your heels look up and then roll the spine and come forward so you keep going you can also close your eyes finding what is comfortable to you and then let's Walk the fingertips towards the knees into a toe squat. And the toe squat, if you have small toes, yeah, so just adjust it, bend the toes out, and place your hands onto your knees, roll the shoulders back. We're here for 30 seconds, keeping your breath nice and smooth. the face seeing you we have about 20 seconds to go place your left hand like holding a chi ball and then raise your other arm up and up and it really doesn't matter which arm to start and then draw the hands down to the center this is mimicking the chi the prana the life force is coming to the center grounding you there is no room for stress no room for fear keep going And last one. Excellent work. Coming on to your hands and knees again, and then just give yourself a beautiful applause, tapping your toes, releasing some of that tension you've created in the toes. Good job. And then let's come into your Anahatasana. So Anahatasana, Keeping, I like to use two blocks. You know, if you don't have blocks, that's okay. You can still get away with it. And then come onto your forearms onto the block. So you can see that my hips are directly on my knees, but you don't have to. You can kind of come forward. You can also have it sitting back like a child's pose. Find what works for you. 
you will feel it into your sternum as well as your lower back coming into your melting heart pose you can also bending into the elbows and then place your palms together put it behind your head Now carefully, it's coming out. Now be mindful how to come out. Let's walk your way into a child's pose. So in child's pose, because we just stressed the shoulders, I recommend bringing the arms to the side so you can just nestle the belly between the thighs and the rest. And then gently roll, ripple up the spine, rolling up. Now again, you can sit onto your heels or if it's more comfortable, I'll just face you. You can face wherever you are and sit between a block. We're just going to do a few rounds of breathing exercise, very simple breathing exercise. So your left hand, you can put it into a mudra. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't need to. But I, tend, I like to put my thumb and index fingers together. The last three fingers are connected. And then placing them down for grounding. So this is yana mudra. And then the right hand, the thumb is to the right nostril. And then the ring finger of my right hand is to the left nostril. We're going to do a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing. We're going to inhale through the left nostrils and then exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, exhale through the left. That's it. We're not going to hold the breath at all. So let's take a breath in through both nostrils. Exhale fully. Close the right nostril. 
inhale left one two three close the left exhale right two three inhale right close the right exhale left inhale left exhale right inhale right exhale left last round inhale left exhale right inhale right exhale left release your hands and then just breathe naturally and slowly open your eyes so the next pose that we're going to move into is shoelace now in shoelace there are a few options that you can do so i'll show you what it looks like you have your right leg on top and then you stack it over top and then you don't have to have your feet aligned so it's very different from traditional hatha yoga you can just allow them to land wherever you feel comfortable most people feel it into the outer hips now if you feel comfortable go right ahead and you can just slowly walk your way down now that's not for you you can also come into a square pose so the square pose is where we stack your right foot on top of the left foot but then there are a couple versions some people will feel more comfortable having the foot right over the knee yeah so and then you're also engaging this foot like two out of ten yeah if you press too hard it becomes more dynamic like a hatha yoga now, I personally also invite this version where the yang side of your foot, the hard edge of your foot, nestle into the yin side of your knee, so the soft part. Now, this is more suitable for those who have more mobility in, in the ankle and then a larger range of motion in the hip. So, as you can see that if you're feeling stressed on the outside of the ankle, don't do it. You can either do it like this, yeah, or go for the shoelace. So once you find your comfortable position, go for it. Slowly walk your way down. You can also place a block level two and supporting your forehead. If your mind has drifted off somewhere else, joyfully bring it back. Bring it to the center of your forehead between the eyebrows.
We are little molecules that collide in this big, vast universe. And if we expand our perspective as wide as our consciousness, we understand that what boggles us down or what makes us feel fearful is just a narrow perspective. slowly coming up so if that was very intense for you just move slowly now before you lie down let's do just a quick counter pose coming into reverse tabletop now again either the hands face into the side but really if you want to face them forward it's up to you to the side or at least 45 degrees out press into your feet lift your pelvis up open your heart to the sky breathe And slowly coming back down let's lie down for your shavasana now at this point if you have a sore low back I also encourage you to place a couple blocks underneath your knees and then lying down Jenny, let's come out. Now find your way back into the second side. And you might notice there are a little bit of differences between both sides. Maybe you have to adjust the variation. So again, I'm going to choose square because that's what I did earlier. But if you can do shoelace, then you cross your knee over more. So in square pose, I'm going to have my left leg on top like this and then I'm gonna press into my foot about two out of ten and then coming slowly drawing myself slowly coming down to the floor So this posture targets a lot into the outer hip and the outer hip is the IT band as well as the gluteus medius that connects to our butt up to the side of the body. And in Chinese meridians is where the gallbladder runs. The gallbladder is the ruler of decision. So when the ruler of decision happens is where you feel committed with every decision that you make and you carry out with no regret, not looking back, not self-doubting. But when it is disharmonized, then you feel the need to change your decisions all the time. So I hope you're staying in your posture. And so in square or shoelace or any poses where you feel the outer thigh is how we harmonize any imbalances in the gallbladder channel. So understand your attention and intention is what makes yoga powerful. If you're doing it for the sake of doing it, then you might get some physical benefits, but there's not going to be some changing, lasting change in your conscious mind. So if you are dealing with, a, with indecisiveness, just understand you are doing what you can to help 
harmonize and help correct that. body invites you, go ahead, go deeper, or enjoy being still, being one with your mind. Slowly, let's come out. And let's give yourself a small little massage. So extend your legs out again, move slowly, and then just rub your hands, creating some heat. And then place them over the kidneys. The kidneys are the door of life, the essence, the root of your being. And then sweep it outside, and then run the hands in. So this is really helping you to stimulate the meridians. Let's do it one more time. Create a little bit of heat. Place your hands behind your small back. Scooch them out to the side. And in. And out. And in. Let's do it last round. Rub your hands. So kidneys, when in balance, is also where the fear resides. So by touching and putting the intention along the meridians, you're really helping to flush out that negative energy. Excellent. Now slowly come into your Shavasana. Rolling down. You can also place one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly. last pose let's shift your hips to the right and then draw the right knee to the chest keep your left leg bent and then cross your right leg over you can hook your foot underneath if that's accessible to you but it's not super important and then gently place both knees down to the left side of the mat if you have a lot of tensile resistance along the outer right hip then just place a block underneath then reach your arms out to the side and keep your face up to the ceiling so in yin because we will be here for several minutes if you turn your head you might compress some of the arteries that run on the side of the neck and that's very dangerous so keep your head facing up 
So in the reclining spinal twist, we are targeting as well the diaphragm and your erector spinae, the back muscles. And the diaphragm is a connection of a heart as well as a liver. So in Chinese meridians, the heart is the seat of your spirit and the liver is the seat of your passion and determination. So it's important to have them harmonize. If you feel any tingling sensations in your hands, just bring them down, either like me, resting on your ribcage, or have your palms down below your shoulders. And then gently bring your knees back into center, moving slowly. So tissues are quite vulnerable after you are in the pose for a while. So just move slow and then draw both knees to your chest. Just give yourself a nice little hug, walk side by side. And then let's go right away to the other side. Place your feet back down and then shift your hips to the left. Cross your left leg over the right. Now if you can hook, go for the hook. And then bringing both knees to the right side of the mat, come into a spinal twist. Now I put a block here, so you can see this is one of your props that you can use. And then this helps to take some of the stress out of your outer hip. And then again, bring your arms directly in alignment with your shoulders. And this other hand either out as well, so it's a very receptive, energizing position. Or you can also place it onto your heart. And so in the world of the yin and yang theory, everything has two aspects to it, a yin side and a yang side. So every situation in life, there's two ways to see. And if you can allow yourself to expand your horizon, when one door closes, another open. And just breathe. This is the undulation of life.
slowly bring your knees back into center and then extend your legs out prepare for final shavasana so i will be leading you a short yoga nidra in shavasana you can also place a bolster or a block under your knees so this is how you would do it if you have blocks and then rest your hands out to the side so get really comfortable maybe wrap a blanket around the body and cover your eyes and when you're ready let's just do a quick deep relaxation on nidra focus on your left hand left elbow and the left shoulder relax your right hand right elbow and the right shoulder and release your left foot left knee and the left hip and as well now place your mind on the right foot right knee and the right hip. Your belly and chest is sinking into the ground, but your heart remains light. And your low back, mid back, and upper back are soft. Relax your neck your head and your forehead and soften your right cheekbone and your left cheekbone your mouth is relaxed and so is your tongue now imagine yourself on top of a beautiful mountain and the sky is golden red. You gaze into the horizon and you say this to yourself three times mentally. I am surrounded by loving consciousness. I am safe. I am surrounded by loving consciousness. I am safe. I am surrounded by loving consciousness. I am safe. Now rest your mind, the temple of your heart, the right side of your heart, size of a thumb. Final Shavasana.